point in life is to change the world, and to change the world you have to change yourself, to be holy. So a few years ago, in 2019, I was invited back to my local parish to celebrate the Mass. So I was thinking about what can I say as a homily. So, you know, I had all of these errors, you know, Islam, LGBTQ, homosexuality, da 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 long, long list. Uh, cohabitation before marriage, the list is endless, no? And a few days before the homily, bear in mind all the people in the congregation who would have been lapsed Catholics, including my friends and also my family, I have a twin brother and two sisters who don't practice now. All my friends I went to school with, played football with, used to drink with, the church was packed, but nobody goes to Mass. So a few days before, our lady inspired me to change the homily, you know? Because speaking about these things is not going to change hearts. But what is going to change hearts is speaking about Jesus Christ crucified and Our Lady. And Our Lady, this is what I want to speak about today. The call to be holy, the call to be a saint, the call to be a great saint. Everybody in this room is called to be a saint. Everyone in this room, according to theologians, is called to be a mystic. So, after the talk, we see a few people floating around. You have to call them down. <laughs> Everybody called to be a saint. This is the great witness of Frank Duff. So, three things about Frank Duff. First one, briefly, is the scripture we said this morning, Ecclesiasticus 24.31. The knowledge of Our Lady will gain eternal life. Those who can't explain me shall have eternal life. Now Frank Duff was very intelligent and his father gathered around him a magnificent library. He was a statistician and a mathematician unlike the one this morning. Venerable Father Patrick Payton was useless in mathematics. Frank Duff the reverse. Statistician even for the civil service. But he understood the, the grace to not have the knowledge of the faith. This is what you have to do. Feed your intellect with the truths of the faith. You can only love what you know. Especially about Our Lady. One of our theologians, lecturers used to say, we can see Our Lady on every page of the scripture. Every page. So, surround yourself with a, a library. The next one is this call to be a saint. We mentioned this was in 1916. This is before. The interesting thing about this publication is it doesn't say much at all about Our Lady because this is before the bombshell of true devotion. He writes this 2016. He doesn't encounter Our Lady fully until a few years later. He says, this is in this pamphlet, called to be a saint. In the heart of every right thinking Catholic, God has implanted, implanted the desire to become a saint. Yet few make a serious attempt to realize the ambition. The cause for this is to a large extent discouragement due to the misunderstanding of what really constitutes a saint. What is a saint? The answer usually returns is the question one who does extraordinary penances and works miracles. Now this is incorrect, for neither miracles nor great penances are essential, but rather the strict avoidance of delicacy, softness and comfort. We are told to beware of injuring our health, and to eat enough plain food enabled for us to work and pray without hindrance. There is ample opportunity for the severest mortification in the restraint of the eyes and the tongue and in the warfare against the seven deadly sins. He quotes a beautiful um, paragraph from Cardinal John Henry Newman, Saint John Henry Newman. He says, this is Newman, if you ask me what you are to do in order to be perfect, I say, First, do not lie in bed beyond the time of rising. This is the friars. We are told to get out of the bed in the morning as our bed is on fire. <laughs> Alright? So our bed is on fire. 
<laughs> Not like when I was in the world, no? You would have 10 minutes snooze and 5 minutes, then 1 minute countdown, 50 seconds countdown, etc. That's your guardian angel to give you a shock, electric shock. Get out of bed, why? Because this is the most important moment of the day. Say thank you for coming through the night. I, f I say first, do not lie in bed beyond the time of rising. Give your first thoughts to God. Make a good visit to the Blessed Sacrament. Say that Angelus devoutly. Eat and drink to God's glory. Say the Rosary well. Be recollected. Keep out of bad thoughts. Make your evening meditation well. Examine yourself daily. Go to bed in time. And you are already perfect. So you have to put this into plan to understand that this is your call in life, not just for religious, to be perfect. Have to especially have and pray for the desire. This is the word that's missing in our language, no? When I never had the vocation, never thought about being a priest. And when I was in formation, even the Boston master said, who wants to be a priest? It was four of us. And the three and the three had some intuition when they were younger. And I said um, to myself, I'm not going to be left out. <laughs> that was the motivation in that moment. To have this desire. And then I heard a, a priest give the homily. So I never had thought to pray directly to be a priest. thought it was too cheeky. I've heard a priest say, if you want something in life, pray for the desire, like an alcoholic. Alcoholic needs desire to stop drinking before they stop the drink. So I pray for the desire to be a priest, which is like a middle ground. No, it's not being too cheeky. It's like a, a, a mediation. The desire, this is what you have to do in your life to pray for this desire. Desire to be a great saints. The desire to pray, even beg for the desire, comes from grace, comes from something supernatural. But the desire is already rooted in God's love, and God's love is rooted in the cross, Calvary. So our desire to be a saint is rooted in the foot of the cross with Our Lady. This is the way to be a saint. Desire De Zidurus. De is a negative. Zidurus. Literal meaning is to reach to the beyond. Reach to the beyond. To reach to the stars. When you go to some marine shrines around the world, always seem to notice a beautiful constellation of the stars for the lady. To reach for the stars. To reach for the impossible. Because God gives you the graces for the impossible. So this is your calling to be a great saint. And what is the most easy and fastest and safest way to be a saint? Anyone, any idea? Stick your hand up if you know the answer. Yes. Through Our Lady. Through Our Lady, exactly. Through Our Lady, through the consecration to hand yourself over to the mother the wisdom in life to know the blessed mother gaze upon her son crucified the foot of the cross the true virus today is sin and consecration to our lady is the true vaccine we said before God placed more attention into fashioning the soul of Mary than the rest of us creation put together. How the Lord values his mother. Mary is the key to eternal salvation. There's not a saint in heaven who has not passed through the Blessed Virgin Mary. The key to paradise. The key to living paradise here on earth. To live paradise here on earth is to live in the heart of the mother. So we beg for the desire to consecrate ourselves, to make ourselves holy, consecrate. Consecrare in Latin, to make holy, to set apart. 
to be declared sacred, to make ourselves a living sacrifice for Almighty God, but through Mary, who is the first one consecrated to Our Lady. Any ideas? Who is the first consecrated to Our Lady? Anyone has the courage to answer? St. John Evangelist? St. John's good answer. Anyone, anyone, anyone further? St. Joseph. St. Joseph's good one. St. John the Evangelist, yes, at the foot of the cross. It says, and from that hour the disciple took her to his own. John 20, 19, 25. Mary becomes our spiritual mother. Mary does not suffer the birth pains in Bethlehem, but suffers horrifically as co-redemptrix the foot of the cross gazing at her son suffering in her heart and soul all that our Lord suffers physically people some theologians also say that our lady suffered physically the same another beautiful notion reality according to the the mystic venerable Mary of Greer, I encourage everyone in this room to buy the mystical city of God. If you want to inflame your love for the Vessel Virgin Mary, then spend some of your euros <laughs> on the mystical city of God. Four volumes. Your life will be transformed. She's a venerable Franciscan. She is one of the in the order of the conceptionists. The conceptionists are the ones who will be here till the end of time. And these are the ones in, involved in the apparition in Ecuador and the Our Lady of Good Success. She says something beautiful about the love of Our Lady. Our Lady saw her son die in desolation, standing at the foot of the cross. But from then, when our Lord ascended into heaven, this mystic says that when she retired to Ephesus with St. John the Evangelist, on a Thursday night she would disappear and then she would reappear on the Sunday. She did not just remember, but she relived the Passion every week until she died. This is the love of Our Lady for you and for me. Suffering again and again each week. Okay, St. John, it's a good answer, but not the right answer. St. Joseph, good answer. So we have St. John, St. Joseph, any more? Any more takers? The first consecrated. Yes? St. John the Baptist? St. John the Baptist, incorrect. Next one. <laughs> Our Lord. Sorry? Our Lord. Our Lord, yes. Our Lord, even more perfectly, when the consecration, the Word made flesh. Jesus Christ, who is Most Holy Mother, living in every moment of his life, 30 years in life in Nazareth, with Mary and Saint Joseph, the hidden life of consecration. Magnificent. So, why? Do we consecrate ourselves? I'm, I'm guessing quite a few in this room have already done the 33 day consecration, but some haven't, so might be hearing this for the first time. St. Louis Grignon de Montfort, this is the formula we follow for 33 days. This is called the slavery to Mary, become the slave of Mary. This is the Bombshell. This is the way to heaven. Just imagine, close your eyes and ponder the thought that you're the slave of Our Lady. He mentions, in order to combat, this is Louis de Montfort, the criticisms of the Protestants, who say that baptism alone is enough. To say that consecration to Mary is why, is a reason why we can perfect and live out our Baptism promises more perfectly. This is the Marian way. This is the royal blue way. Because this is the way trodden by Jesus Christ 
himself. Jesus Christ came to us through Mary. We go back to Christ through Mary. Our Lady is the aqueduct or the neck or the channel between the mystical head, Jesus Christ, and the mystical body, ourselves. The Mediatrix, his father said this morning beautifully, not the Mediatrix of graces, but the Mediatrix of all graces. The grace for you to come here through Our Lady, the grace to you to go to confession, to even to be born through Our Lady. So we have to realize that the most safest and easiest and shortest way to Christ is through the Lady. Why? Because she embellishes and makes beautiful our offerings. In humility we go to Jesus through Mary. As Jesus sees us approaching, he sees his mother. Never go, it's possible to go to Jesus directly, but we try always to go through the mother. Why? Because he is more likely to say yes. What about when you were small? Did you ever naughty when you were small? Father was there with the pups a few years ago. He had the slipper or cane, not now. We get reported to the police. <laughs> <laughs> but had there some kind of instrument of uh, chastisement? So. The child looks at the father and then what does he do? He hides behind the mother. No? Because he knows that the mother will take the punishment for the child. This is the way we hide in the mantle of Mary before approaching Jesus. This is the way of marrying consecration. This is the way Frank Duff, 1921, before he joined before he started the Legion. He went into a, a local charity shop in Dublin on the quayside there and he rescued a book and it was true devotion to Mary. The penny never dropped until five times, five times he read this book to understand the magnificence of the lady. One of my friends, Nigerian, was flying home a few years ago to the airport, the man said to him in the airport, what is in your case? He said, clothes and this and that. And he said, no, what's in the case? He said, I just explained. He said, no, tell me. And he went through the case and he got hold of the book through devotion to Our Lady. This, my friend had, had been delaying and delaying and delaying to read the book. He said, this is it, this is, what I'm looking for. And he said, he said, what's in it? What's in the book? He said, pages and words and writing. No, what's in the book? And he said, this man was asking very strange questions. Then he put everything back in the case. He rescued the book, put it in his hand luggage, and then he started to ponder this on the plane. And he realized this was a message from our lady. The bombshell, this was the bomb that the man was searching for, the bombshell which he re read and changed his life. True devotion, this is a, a magnificent way to change your heart. Like Our Lady, when, uh, if you example, an example that Louis de Montfort says, if, if we have a king and we want to present a gift to him, imagine a boy has, a half-eaten apple which has gone brown in his pocket and he wants to present it to the king. The king would ignore it normally but just before he presents it the queen the mother steps in, collects the apple, puts it on a silver plate, washes the apple a little bit, purifies it, embellishes it. The king rejoices because he sees the mother presenting the gift. This is our Lady, she purifies, polishes and perfects the gifts so the King accepts them. Jesus Christ rejoices in us the more he sees Mary present in our lives and in our hearts. So, the point of this talk is to have the desire to 
be consecrated to Our Lady, to hand yourselves over to be a slave. She is your mother whether you like it or not. Our Lady is a mother, has dominion over all souls, even those in mortal sin. Give control over to her, formally, and all your merits in this life. Imagine if you die and go to paradise, if you are held in the mantle of Our Lady, Christ is looking for you in paradise, where's Sally? Can it see Sally? Mother, where's Sally? And Our Lady opens her mantle. Here is Sally. Our Lady has seven privileges. Seven privileges. The Franciscans have a beautiful prayer to Our Lady. It's called the Seven Glories of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The first one, chronologically, is the Immaculate Conception. Our Lady, the greatest gift ever imaginable to be given to the world without spot, without stain of sin, preserved from sin through the most precious blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Because she was immaculate, she had the grace and the purity to say, to give her virginity, perpetual virginity, to make this vow, also to say yes to the angel at the foot of the cross, the, sorry, the Annunciation. This given her also the grace to say yes to Jesus Christ hanging on the cross. This is the co-redemption. This is what we need to pray for. This fifth dogma to remove all the errors in the world. The purification of the world will come to the Lady, to the Mediatrix. Because she's co-redemptic, she's given the grace to be the mediatrix of all graces and our spiritual mother. So the co-redemption is the crux of all her privileges. Flowing out from the co-redemption also is the Assumption of Our Lady and her crown is Queen of Heaven. So consecration then is the way of humility. The greatest and most the profound virtue of Our Lady is her humility. Given the greatest gift but understanding, it says also in the mystical city of God, Our Lady considered herself to be the most vilest creature created under the speck of nothingness, under the abyss of nothingness, yet this is Our Lady. So we thank in consecration also we thank Our Lady, venerate Our Lady, we don't adore Our Lady, Our Lady is not God, but we give her maximum veneration and love because she is the one who worked out our salvation at the foot of the cross. How do we say thank you in the most perfect way? How do we receive this grace of desire to be holy? fueled with charity to be the foot of the cross with Our Lady by venerating her and by consecrating ourselves to her in order to imitate her son, the first consecrated in the most perfect Marian way. This is the way then to paradise, the Marian way, where we have to bend down low and as to enter the grotto of Bethlehem. To bend humbly the knee and enter through the narrow, narrow Marian gate of salvation. This is the way to give due glory to Mary. The way of, we say, ma Marian maximalism. This is how to say thank you to the Lady for being at the foot of the cross, the mediatrix of all graces. But this is the way to receive the graces in your lives to be holy, to have the desire. The desire is the fuel of your will. To be consecrated is coming through your human will. You have to will it. Your soul is made of three faculties. 
your memory, your intellect, and your will. You have to decide. Place the decision in the heart of the mother. This is the way forward, the way also perceived by Frank Duff. The Marian consecration. This is the way to be holy. I mentioned this morning the way to change the world is to change ourselves. The way forward is an interior way to move through the grades of prayer and to become even living in the life of contemplation. To contemplate Jesus Christ hanging on the cross through the heart of the mother. This is the antidote and the lady of our times in these crazy times we live in of sin. The virus is sin and the vaccine is a spiritual remedy called Marian consecration. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.